But imagine if they just added one word to change their story. One word. And that magic word is yet. I'm not good at math yet. But you know what? I will be. I will be very good at math. I'm going to be great at math. Math is going to be one of my biggest assets. I am going to take this challenge. I'm going to leverage it because you know what? If the first thing in ninth grade, I'm, I can't overcome a, a, a challenge such as a class, a subject. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing this. It's going to happen. Well, that's a pretty powerful story. So what do you think that is going to do? Well, that's going to obviously influence their actions. cool little framework to share with you. And this is what I like to call the story cycle, or you could think of it as the story wheel or whatever you want to call it, the story cycle. And this is a framework of a belief system framework and how our subconscious can be sometimes programmed in a way that maybe we don't want it to be programmed and how our beliefs sometimes take control of us. Um, before I get into this, I have to tell you that this is a uh, very popular and very famous framework that has been taught by many different personal development and productivity gurus in the world. I don't know its original origins, um, but this is a little bit of a modified and more simple version of this. And this is how this works. There are three parts of the story cycle. And the first one is the story or your beliefs, however you want to call it. And that story you tell yourself, whether that be positive or negative, will ultimately influence the action that you take. So if you tell yourself a really garbage, uh, sad story, you're going to probably take very little to no action, of course. And that little to no action is going to go to the third part of this story cycle, which is the results. If you don't take solid action in your life, you're not going to get solid results. But what's interesting is that the reason why this is a cycle is because those results, what they do is they reinforce the story that you're telling yourself. See, I told you. See? So we're going to plug this into two different examples that a teen may be facing. One is going to be a very simple one and very um, lighthearted one, and that's math. Oh, gosh, don't you love math? And I don't know if you can see my face. That is a very uh, sarcastic and rhetorical question. Uh, I hate math. Once they started introducing letters to math, I was like, you know what? I'm done. Forget it. <laughs> but that was the story I told myself, right? But seriously, I don't, oh, God, math is just, oh, it's just so hard for me. I, my brain is not wired that way. I'm more of an artist and a musician. I just, oh, I hate math and math hates me. Well, that's my story. So, and that's probably the story I told myself in high school. So what do you think that story is going to do? What is that going to influence when it comes to my actions? I don't have to tell you, students today are way too stressed, overwhelmed, and anxious about their lives and their futures. This is why I do what I do. As a youth speaker, I teach students to step back from the situation, see the choices they have in front of them, make great decisions, and build positive patterns around this process. Whether it's substance abuse, bullying, or stress about their digital lives, the students I've worked with have had some great success. So I wanna work with your students. I wanna come down to your school and your event and actually teach your students the art and the science of making great decisions. So click the link below and schedule your call with me so I can learn a little bit more about what you're looking for in your next speaker. Do you think if a student is telling themselves that story, do you think they're gonna go to extra help? Do you think they're going to go actually out seek that tutor? Do you think that they're going to study not only effectively, but consistently? Do you think they're going to use ChatGPT in the way that it ultimately can be used to help them with math? No, of course not, because what's the point? Math hates them and they hate math. So that's their actions. And of course, if they don't do all those things, well, then what do you think the results are going to be? They're going to get poor grades on quizzes and tests and possibly fail trigonometry, pre-calc, whatever. 
And then once that happens, that's going to influence their story. And it's going to reinforce their story. See, I told you I suck at math. I hate math and math hates me. But imagine if they just added one word to change their story. One word. And that magic word is yet. I'm not good at math yet. But you know what? I will be. I will be very good at math. I'm going to be great at math. Math is going to be one of my biggest assets. I am going to take this challenge. I'm going to leverage it because you know what? If the first thing in ninth grade, I'm, I can't overcome a, a, a challenge such as a class, a subject. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing this. It's going to happen. Well, that's a pretty powerful story. So what do you think that is going to do? Well, that's going to obviously influence their actions. They're going to go get that tutor. They're going to use ChatGPT wisely. They're going to study effectively and consistently. It's going to happen. And when they do that, of course, they're going to get better grades. They're going to continue to get better grades. And then all of a sudden, that's going to come right back around the cycle. And then it's going to reinforce that positive story. See, man, I, I, I am good at math. Wow. All right. So that's one very lighthearted example. I'm going to shift gears now to drinking. Okay. So drinking is an interesting one. And now I'm not talking about drugs. I'm not talking about pills. I'm talking about drinking. Because this is a interesting one because drinking is so societally accepted, even though it's one of the most dangerous drugs in the world. So let's tell ourselves a story. Uh, I'm going to use my story, right? Uh, <laughs> drinking's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's just a couple of beers, whatever. It's just a couple of drinks. Listen, we only live once. We're young, right? We can take it. We're supposed to do this. We're supposed to party. We're in high school. We're supposed to have a good time. It's going to be the time of our lives. Let's have some fun. All right? So that's the story. Well, what does that, of course, do to our actions? Well, of course, we're going to go out and drink. And, you know, whatever is what's what's going to happen. Well, what's that result that's going to happen? <laughs> well, the result is that we're going to have a hangover. So we might be throwing up the next day. We're definitely going to have a headache. And of course, we're young. Six hours later, we're going to be feeling OK. And what is that going to reinforce that story? Well, it's going to reinforce and say, huh, yeah, you know what? Drinking wasn't that bad. OK, yeah, it sucks. Hangover sucks. But all right. Cool. I, yeah, I didn't think that was, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. Sure. Sweet. And nine times out of 10, it isn't a big deal. If you consider that a big, not a big deal, it's your decision. But what about that one time? See, when we have this story cycle that reinforces a behavior that is negative based on a poor story that these kids are telling themselves, that only goes so far until that one time. Until that one time they get into a car when they shouldn't. Until one time they decide to drive when they shouldn't. Until one time they try to cross the street but they are impaired. It only takes one time. So this story cycle, this belief wheel, whatever you want to call it, is so crucial. And I can tell you, when I first realized this, it was so powerful. When I stumbled upon this and I applied it to my life, it was extremely powerful. It really shifted so many beliefs that I had about what I was capable of, about what I'm supposed to do here or what I can do here. And I was older at the point when I realized this, I was an adult already, so I was thinking of it solely through the positive. But I think when students can see this, right now, 14, 15, 16 years old, they're riddled with negative influences in their life. Um, they're, they're, they're bombarded with a negative social media feed. They're inundated with just drama and and. BS that they're trying to navigate their day. And when they're able to realize that they have so much power in front of them, they have so much ability to take control of their lives through their belief systems and through their story. Well, then that is an asset that is 
well worth teaching and well worth uh, uh, living and adopting. So I really hope this story cycle you can use with your students. Please do so and then come back and tell me how it worked. I want you to leave a comment below. Tell me how it worked. Tell me if the your kid kind of like had a wide eye moment because if they did, then you got them. Uh, I'm pumped because this is, I know, a very, very powerful asset. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's short, sweet little episode. Um, if you liked today's episode, then hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time I release a new video. And if you like today's episode, then you're probably also going to like this one right over here.